Until so, day four related rates. All right, we're going to get into our last the last look at related rates. All right, so we'll just jump right in here. Nothing to really say. We're just going to look at some more different situations. So, one train. All right, travels west. towards Chicago at 120 miles per hour. It's trucking. It's actually training. It's training. For a big train. While a second train it's starting to sound a lot like a physics problem. Right, no, we're not going to do that whole, like, you know, train in San Francisco leaves it so, such How time. far will they bounce apart right. from each other? Yeah. 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 Right. While a second train travels north away from Chicago uh, at 90 miles per hour. <coughs> at time t equals zero, and we'll say, I guess, time t equals zero hours, right? Since our rate's in hours, we probably can assume that time is in hours there. At time t equals zero hours, the first train all right, is 10 miles east of Chicago. And the second train is 20 miles north of Chicago. Twenty miles north of Chicago. Calculate the rate at which the distance between the trains is changing. <coughs> equals zero. <coughs> I don't think so. Like, in general, you'll always be able to have, like, some formula, some geometric formula or something like that. Sometimes, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I think. Um, well, I don't know. We, let's let's draw a picture here, and I think we'll see. We'll see. I, maybe I'll try and get you to hear what you're saying. So, um, sorry. Right, so you got Chicago, all right? So, plot the point here for real. Let's see. There's the city of Chicago. That little dot. Okay. We have one train traveling west, so that would be like, you know, this direction, right, this way. Oh, you can't really see my hand there, but this way. Can't really see that either. Okay, never mind. Um, and, but it's 10 miles east of Chicago. So it's east of Chicago, heading west, therefore it's heading, like, toward Chicago, right? So, so we'll say our little train is, like, over here somewhere. It's east of Chicago, but heading west into, into Chicago. Okay. Wait, so if it's heading into Chicago, that means that line's getting smaller, so should it be a negative 120? Right, so so we'll talk about that. So the distance here, well, how far away is that train from Chicago? 10, okay? So I'll just use like a variable x here, we'll call that 10. I'll use x because x is, you know, for like a nice horizontal kind of distance there. Okay, so x is 10 miles. But then, right, we do have a rate of change of x. It's dx dt. 
right? We have a rate of change there. It's changing. It's not staying. It's not. It's not just sitting there, 10 miles away from Chicago, not moving anywhere. It's it's getting closer to Chicago at a rate of what? Negative. Yeah, 120. But it's negative 120 because it's it's a the amount the distance away is decreasing. So we want to call that a negative 120 miles per hour. Okay. <coughs> And then simultaneously, we have another train that is traveling away from Chicago, traveling north away from Chicago at 90 miles per hour. So that's like directly up from Chicago there. We have another train. And what's the distance that train is? 20. So yeah, the length here, again, I'm going to use Y because that's like a vertical distance. So we'll say 20 miles. And so then... Um, do we have a rate of change of y? Is the trains is the train moving? Yes. Yeah, it is, right? Okay, at what speed or what rate? Ninety. So dy dt, the rate of change of this kind of distance away from Chicago. Okay, is that gonna be a positive ninety or a negative ninety? Positive. Positive because it's going away, right? So ninety miles per hour. Okay, 90 miles per hour. Good. And then we want to find the rate at which the distance between the trains is changing at time t equals zero. So the distance between the trains is then from this train to this train. It's this. How do you look at triangles? Right, and it makes a triangle. And not any kind of triangle, not right. just any, but it's a right triangle. That's right. I'm going to rip all my stuff in that space. Yeah. Womp womp. Okay. But again, what's the thing we're trying to find? Are we trying to find the distance between the two trains? No. We're trying to find the, the rate. So we'll call this distance, I'll call that distance like C. We don't want to find the distance though. We want to find DC, DT. We want to find the rate of change of C. <coughs> okay. So, right, so what are we going to use to relate all this information together? What, what thing do we have in math? What, what's the thing we could use to relate all these pieces? So Pythagorean theorem. Okay, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In this case, we'll say x squared plus y squared equals c squared. Okay. Now, since I know x and y, 10 and 20, should I go ahead and just plug those in right now? No, right. Remember, when we find, so there's our, this is like our setup. Here's the equation that relates all those things, right? Kind of using those guidelines that I gave you guys, you know, several days ago. All right, so we wrote all of our stuff out. This is what we're trying to find is the dc, dt. We don't plug any numbers in. Now, remember, there are some times when we are able, when we can plug in numbers ahead of time. All right, we can plug numbers in ahead of time if they're, like, not changing. Well, that negative 120 miles per hour, okay, that's like, well, sorry, the 10, it's changing because it's the, we have this rate here, it's changing by, okay, so it's not, the t it's not always going to be 10 miles away, or, the, or here in this case, the, you know, the, this other train will not always be 20 miles away, it's changing, so we can't just plug those in, we want to take the derivative, like uh, you guys said. So, right, so we take the derivative here, with respect to what variable? T, T, we want to take the derivative with respect to T, so derivative of x squared is 2x dx dt plus derivative of y squared to y dy dt um, equals, and then derivative of c squared is 2c dc dt. Do we need to go back and alter c? So, yeah, we will get, we'll get to that, mm -hmm, but yes, mm -hmm, exactly. All right, so let's start plugging in for information now. Let's plug in stuff. So it's 2 times x is 10, okay? dx dt is that negative 120. Let's see, y is 20. dy dt is 90 equals 2 times, two times c. But what's c? The speed of light. C is the speed of light, that's right. In a vacuum. Uh, no, yeah, but in this case, right, we don't have the value C. Is that okay? Well, we gotta find it. Yeah, because what are we trying to solve for here? We're trying to solve for 
dc dt. So if I don't know C and I don't know dc dt, that's a problem. I can't solve for dc dt if I also don't know C, right? We have one equation and I'll have two unknowns and I can't solve an equation with when it has solve a single equation when it has two unknowns in it. So instead, right, we've got to come up with a value for C. So C, remember, is this length. How can I find this length using the information we've got here? Connor, you want to say? Yeah, so this length at the instant, right, that we're interested in, at time t equals 0, this length is 20, this length is 10, and so to find c, we'll just do 20 squared plus 10 squared equals c squared. So I get 400 plus 100 equals c squared, and so I get 500 is equal to c squared. So we square root both sides, and we get c is approximately... <coughs> Uh, 22.361. I actually, uh, actually, it's not a bad idea. Let's go ahead, let's leave that as a square root of 500. That way we're not losing any, um, any value there. I think we really want to hold off on rounding until the very end. So, for example, let's, if it's in the square root of 500, let's just say C is then the square root of 500. Okay, and so that's dc over dt. Okay, remember, if this were a free response question, you only have one more step you would need to do here. You could, you could just say dc dt equals, and you could put the two, oops. Okay, you could stop right here and say, all right, I'm done. You could circle that, right? That's all arithmetic at this point. I just divided over the 2 times the square root of 500 to this <coughs> side, didn't multiply anything out. And you could say that. Okay, what units will we give this, though? Miles per hour, right? It's a rate of change of C, which is a distance over time. So distance over distance per time, so miles per hour there, okay? And so you can say, that's it. That's done. Of course... If this were like a multiple choice though or something like that, we want to be able to simplify that. So let's do that too here. So in parentheses. Thank you. It's all that practice. You guys practice on your cell phones, typing things in. I practice on my graphing calculators, typing things in. <laughs> okay. Hey, I actually, I actually have right. my graphing calculator on my phone. So it's like there normal. you go. So By the way, what's the name of that uh, app that okay, you have? Okay, it's kind of weird. It's, it's, a, it's, it's like called like Wabbit Emu. Like, like Wabbit, like... Like Wabbit, not Rabbit, but like word. Elmer Fudd like saying... W-A-B-I-T. Yeah, like, e e like Emu, like okay. emulator. Okay, right. And then do they have to download then the... Uh, is that on like the App Store or it's on, it's yeah. on the okay. Play Store? And once it's on you, Play Store. Okay. So once you download it, you'll like get a screen and you have to like from the app it lets you download. Okay. An the graphing calculator, calculator. Yeah. ROM or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's a ROM file. And then you can choose uh, okay. your ROM. Yeah, you can choose you get to choose your model. Oh, okay, it does. You get to choose your model. Okay. I choose the you can get like color a one. PI nine and fire or whatever Right, okay. Because my, some of my students are doing, um, or doing mm, trig ratios and stuff like that, like sine, cosine, tangent. But they can, they, most of their calculators have like sine, cosine, and tangent. But anyway, I was going to show them how to get that if they want it. Yeah, okay? If they have iPhones, they can't do it. Oh, iPhones, it doesn't work? Yeah. Hey. So that's like your whole phone. That's probably, yeah. All right, so anyway, so there's, there are your answers, right? We plug things in. All right, any questions on any of that? So, right, so the distance between the two trains is increasing at a rate at that instant time t equals zero of 26.833 miles per hour. <coughs> That's right. Why, again, do you uh, take the derivative of the Pythagorean theorem the first time? Because, so, the Pythagorean theorem relates all these pieces of information we've got, right? We have a right triangle, all the sides, that, that kind of the deal, Okay. Why do we take the derivative of that? Because what are we interested in trying to find? We want to find the rate at which the distance between the trains is changing. So when I have it set up just at the Pythagorean theorem, that's not, those, aren't any, those are not rates there. Those are just the measurements of away from Chicago. To then obtain the rates, given a function, given the, like, so the rate of change of the distance is just you take the derivative of the distances here. So the derivative of that, derivative of that, derivative of that. 
with respect to time because they're all changing with respect to time. So yeah, that's why we take the derivative there. We're trying to find the rate of change at which the distance between the trains is changing. And you don't get five hour triple. Okay. All right. Other questions on that? That's conceptually what's going on there. Right. We did one kind of like that with a ladder on uh, Friday. You weren't here for it. But the ladder was slightly different. Slightly different. Okay. Next, a television camera. Can we do a speed boy problem? At ground level. I don't have a speed light problem. Is filming the liftoff of a space shuttle. Oh yeah. That'd be a good time. <coughs> Should write in a different color, like what is fluff and then what's important. <laughs> right. That is rising. So a television camera at ground level is filming the liftoff of a space shuttle that is rising according to the position equation. So that is rising according to the position equation. S equals 50T squared. Oh, and so, by the way, S is in feet, T is in seconds. Okay. If the camera is 2,000 feet <coughs> from the launch, Find the rate of change of the angle of elevation of the camera ten seconds after liftoff. So the camera, if you can imagine here, guys, what's happening is the camera is like pivoting with the rocket. Like it, the camera starts, you know, shooting the rocket when it's on ground level. And then as the rocket lifts off, the camera's going to pan up to, you know, be able to follow the rocket as it's going up. Okay. That's the idea. And so we're going to find the rate of change. And, of course, as the camera, as the camera's shooting, you know, initially... It's got a um, angle with the ground of, I guess, zero degrees, you would say, right? And then as it pans up, the camera will, you know, open that angle with the ground up somewhat to, um, you know, to follow that rocket. All right, and so you're going to figure out what is the rate of change that that angle, or that camera is going through there, the rate of change of the angle. So let's draw a picture. Okay, so there's the ground. <coughs> And then launching off of the ground somewhere up in the sky is a rocket. Okay. It's a rocket. And we can assume that it launched at a 90 degree angle from the ground there. Okay. And then somewhere away we have a little camera. Can we a rocket man while we're doing this problem? If you if you want to sing it in your head, that's fine. Not in your head, Bryson. Okay, and there's the there's the camera. It's like a little gun shooting at the rocket, actually. But anyway. So the angle of elevation, the rate of change of the angle of elevation. So where is the angle of elevation here? 
Where is it in our little picture? The one next to the camera. It's right at this angle right here in front of the camera. Right? That's the angle of elevation. We'll call that theta, right? Because theta is the typical variable we use to describe an angle. So we'll say theta. Okay. That's correct. And oof, let's let's. Is there any other piece of information we can label in our picture? So you, yeah, Ryan, what would you we say? The camera is two thousand feet away from where the rocket shot off. Yep, camera and is two thousand feet away. And I did those. So I'll call that like X, maybe. Yeah. And I did a little bit of math, and the rocket is fifty thousand feet. Now that's interesting. How did you get that the rocket was fifty thousand feet off the ground? Ten into fifty. So, uh, sorry, it will be 5,000, right. But so, yes, remember guys, in this case, we are not told. So that's, that's good, that's good though. This is because that was different, right? I mean, this is different. Normally we're told the exact distance here of the rocket, but we're not told the distance of the rocket. We're told that the rocket is, has a position of S equal to 50 times T squared. All right, now if we're trying to find the rate of change of the angle of elevation of the camera after 10 seconds, that means the T here is going to be what? 10. 10. So it's got to be S equals 50 times 10 squared, which is then, yes, 5,000 <laughs> feet. Not 50,000. Right. Just watch your zeros there. Yeah. Okay. But the basic idea, though, was right. Was like That's important. Over 10. <laughs> <coughs> okay. So is, that, is there anything else we can label in here? You don't really need anything okay, do we need the okay? We can put the C for the hypotenuse there. Okay, there's a C for the hypotenuse. We could solve for C if we wanted to. Yep, to find that distance. So yeah, so um, what is something that's going to relate? Remember, we're trying to find what are we trying to find here? Wait, wait, wait. The rate of change of the angle, which would we would, how would we denote that? D theta dt. So theta, we're not sure about what that equals, but we want we're solving for d theta. Could we find dt? That's what we're trying to find. So what relates this? Yeah, tangent. We're going to use tangent. We're going to use tangent here. So tangent. Now why tangent? Because we have the opposite leg and the adjacent leg. So tangent of theta, we're going to say, is equal to what over what? 5,000 over 5,000. So we don't want to plug in our numbers yet because... We're going to do uh, 50 t squared over... Yeah, so 50 t... Well, so let's... Yeah, let's, we can say 50 t squared over... Two thousand. I'm looking here though. I think I want this to be. I think I want this to be actually s over x. Why? Position over over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see here. Hang on. One hundred t. I'm looking here. It's something. Oh, yeah, if you put it, if you put 2,000. Yes. Alright, I think this still <laughs> might work, yes. I think this still should work, yes. You said over X, right? No, it said over 2,000. Over 2,000? Which is X still, right, okay. Yeah. Okay, I think this might still work. This, this still might work, yes, okay. Okay, now why are we allowed to plug in the 2,000 for x here? Normally we don't plug in numbers. Yeah, this camera and the distance it has to the launch pad, okay, is is um a it's a 2,000. It's a constant distance. We'll say it's a negligible change, but yes, you're right. I mean. Well, are we all going to assume that it's, you know, the position is a con, you know, like exactly 50 t squared? Like that would be pretty precise too. So we have to, we have, yeah, you're right though. You're right, though, Brandon. That's true. So, but we'll, we'll assume it's negligible difference. So, um, so anyway, so there's our setup. All right. So we can simplify this sum. So let's see, tangent of theta equals let's see, 50 over 2,000 is 5 over 200 or 1 over 
40? Yeah. yeah. T squared? T squared over 40. T squared over 40, yep, same thing. Mm -hmm. But I see what you're doing. And so now what should we do? We've simplified it some. Take the derivative with respect to what variable? T. So the derivative of tangent is positive secant squared. Only the cos, only the cos. When you take the, when you get the cos as an answer. So it's secant squared theta times times d theta dt. Don't forget, folks, so this is taking the derivative with respect to time. So when we take the derivative of tangent of theta, it's secant squared theta times the derivative of what's inside with respect to t, <coughs> d theta dt. And again, that's important because what are we trying to solve for here? That. So if we don't have that show up, we're going to be in big trouble, right? That's right. So then we take the derivative here. What's the derivative of 1 40th t squared with respect to t? 1 20th t. 1 20th t. I don't need to write dt dt. If you want to, you can. But with dt dt, this implies just 1. So it's just 1 20th t. Okay. Okay, so now what do we plug in? T. Well, what's t? Ten. ten. So it's one twentieth times ten. We need to find. Ooh, I need a theta here. How can we figure out this theta? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Side angle side. It's side angle side. Yeah, we have to go back to the very beginning and say, all right, tangent of theta is equal to the opposite 5,000 over the adjacent 2,000. <coughs> now, it doesn't say here whether we're working with radians or degrees. Would this also be applied as a calculator problem? Oh, yeah, this is definitely a calculator problem, for sure. Oh, shall. This would be a calculator problem. Um, I am currently set into degrees, so I, but I guess, you know what, since we're in calculus, we'll use radians, okay? So let's keep it in radians. So we'll say, let's see here. So tangent of what angle gives us 5,000 or 2,000? So we have to do, to solve this, we'll say theta equals, yes, tangent inverse of 5 over 2, right? Because 5,000 divided by 2,000 implies to 5 halves. So second tangent, 5 over 2. I get 1.19. I did it in radians. Okay, so we get 1.19. So theta is approximately 1.190 radians. Well, that doesn't really help us. And so then we come back up here, and so we're going to do secant squared then of 1.190. Yeah, you can if you want to leave it as tangent. I think that'd be a better way to do it. So you can just leave it as this and then just plug tangent inverse of 5 halves in for the secant squared. So for example, you can do, well, let me hold off on that. I'm getting way ahead of myself, I think. But Okay. So anyway, um, let's simplify this right-hand side over here. 10 over 20, that's minus just 1 half. And then secant squared, and maybe I will write that. Instead of writing the decimal, I'm going to write it as tangent inverse of 5 halves d theta dt. Question? Okay, where did I lose you, Emma? Right here? So I'm not, I could have, like, I could have done this in my calculator and gotten this decimal, but instead I'm like, you know what, rather than, because that requires me to round, and so I'm losing some, some data there that could potentially like throw my numbers off. So instead, I'm going to leave it as the exact value here. So instead of saying secant squared of, you know, because it's secant squared of theta, so I'm trying to find theta here. Theta is precisely tangent inverse of 5 halves in this problem. If I type in my calculator and get a decimal, now I've rounded it some. So instead, I'm going to keep this and say it's not secant squared of 1.190. I'm going to say secant squared of tangent inverse of 5 halves. Like, that's the exact value. And so then I want to finish solving here for d theta dt. So that requires me to then do d theta dt equals, and then take one half and divide that by secant squared of tangent inverse of five halves. 
I know it's like really small here. Let me see if I can like, zoom in on that. So. Okay. So five. And so we type that mass into our calculator. So point five divided by, and you could leave it there. You could stop. Okay. You could stop and say what units are this? Is with this be? So we're talking about. D theta dt. So it depends on whether you're using radians or degrees. I'm using radians, so I would say radians per what? Per second. Okay, if you're using degrees, of course you'll then use degrees per second. Okay, but you could stop right there. Question? Yep. Right here? I could. I could have made it 1 over 2 secant squared tangent inverse of 5 halves. Mm -hmm. But I just, again, because that's sufficient. It's all uh, trig or arithmetic, so you can stop if this were for your response question. However, let's actually simplify this and get an actual number here and just see what, see what it says. So, um, yeah, yeah, I did radians. So if you did degrees, then you want to put it that way. So we'll do... T um, boof. I'm going to find the denominator first and then just do one half divided by that. So let's see, secant squared, how do we do secant squared in our calculator? One divided by... Yeah, it's one over cosine of... And it's cosine inverse. I no, 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 sorry, sorry. Yeah, one over cosine... Man. One over cosine of tangent inverse, so tangent inverse of five halves. And I want to square this whole quantity, though, because it's secant squared. Oh, sorry. Sorry, let me, let me do it all over again. So cosine is 1 over, secant is 1 over cosine. And we want to do uh, secant of tangent inverse of 5 halves. Okay. But again, I don't want just secant of tangent inverse. Whoops. Tangent inverse of 5 halves. I want to do secant squared. So to do that, I have to square this whole quantity then. Okay, so I the parentheses around the secant part, 1 over cosine, and then I hit enter. I get 7.25? That's not right. Is that, is that what people got? Um, I got 7.5. I got a. Okay. <coughs> Actually, you know what? 7.25 is what I have from my, on my paper, yeah, too. So, but then I have to do one half divided by that, because all I did was the denominator. I have to do one half divided by that number. So 0.5 divided by 7.25, and there it is. So d theta dt. Yeah, I'll zoom out, sorry. D theta dt is approximately 0 0.069. Okay, radian per second. <coughs> okay. So there's that. All right, again, really try to hold off, and I'm glad that Drew is pointing those things out for us, guys, because really hold off on rounding to the very end, okay? Please be hesitant to really round any point, okay? Try and keep it as exact as you can until the very end, and then get your final decimal answer. Okay, for a free response question, at least for multiple choice, you can round intermediately, and then just, you know, your answer should be, be close enough to whatever the multiple choice says. So. All right, any other questions for me? That's the last related rates. That's the last bit. Cool. Okay, so we'll stop there then.